Welcome everyone, Jay Crash back with you today to run down my top 10 favorite films of 2023. I saw a lot of movies last year, 47 to be exact from 23. I also logged and scored each one of those films as I do all the films that I watch on my IMDB account and also my letterbox. I've included the links to those pages in the description as well as my scoring criteria. Now, these are my favorites, quote unquote. I'm not saying these are the best films, but I feel pretty strongly about these ones. There's a few honorable mentions. I'm going to throw them up on the screen real quick. They are logged with the score, so you can see that as well. I also want to point attention to my YouTube short format movie reactions. They're one minute long. I give a brief rundown on the film, things I liked, things I didn't like, and I give a score at the end. So check those out. Most of these films in my top 10, I do have shorts for. So I'm going to try to buzz through these. Let's start with number 10. It's Saltburn. This was a very divisive film this year. People loved it. People hated it. I like those types of films. This is Emerald Fernell directed Promising Young Woman a few years ago, and I enjoyed this movie. I think it's a movie that's misunderstood. It is a very esoteric film, and I think a lot of people kind of miss what was going on. Now, it does have a surface story that's very intriguing. Solid acting by Barry Keegan. Rosamund Pike is very good in the film, and Jacob Elori also recommend this one. It's salt burn let's see if you like it or hate it all right number nine is air this movie was kind of overlooked i think because it came out very early in the year and it's directed by ben affleck and it's the story of nike and their rise from standard running shoe to basketball shoe icon and it's all about them trying to court the endorsement of michael jordan Excellent performances here. Check out the YouTube short. This was a really fun film, and I enjoyed it. All right, number eight, surprise comedy for me. One of the best comedies of the year, it's Shortcomings. I really enjoyed the humor here. It's clever. It's witty. It's kind of dark humor, self-deprecating, and I enjoyed the performance by the lead character. Some real laugh out loud moments here, and I appreciated the quirky style of the picture all right, number seven is Asteroid City. This is the latest from Wes Anderson, and I'm hit or miss with Wes Anderson movies, uh, but I have to say that I've seen this one twice, and I think it's my favorite Wes Anderson picture. Sometimes there's a disconnect between the emotion of his pictures and the technical brilliance, but in this case, this film had a lot of heart, and I loved the idea of a play within the film, and this sort of meta concept that's going on real strong performances quirky characters everything you want from a wes anderson picture beautiful sets the bigotures that are used the models uh, the cinematography just well done on so many levels asteroid city Number six is the latest Sofia Coppola release. It's Priscilla. I really admire Sofia Coppola, and I really enjoyed this film. I loved especially the attention to detail. Of course, Sofia's direction, but also the cinematography, the art direction in the picture is fantastic. It's as though we're looking through old home video, old black and white photos. The aesthetic here is very well done. It's a very subtle picture in contrast to the Baz Luhrmann Elvis from last year. It's a very quiet, gentle look at the live of Priscilla Presley, and I appreciated this a great deal. All right, number five is Zone of Interest. This is an international release out of Poland, and this takes us back to World War II and the Auschwitz concentration camp, and it examines the Commandant. And he lives next door to the camp with his family. Right on the other side of the wall is Auschwitz. It's a very interesting juxtaposition. It's a very creepy type of film. It puts us in the situation and allows us to simply watch this family and their dynamics and the reality that they create. How they could be living next to something so atrocious and just carry on with their lives 
lives is fascinating and it's explored very well in this picture. Great cinematography as well as great sound. I wouldn't be surprised if this one wins the award for best sound at the Academy Awards, although Oppenheimer will probably steal it. This is a slow film at times, but the payoff in the end, you ruminate over, it, it settles within you, and its impact comes, at least for me, a couple of days after the viewing. All right, number four. This is a big surprise film for me. It's How to Have Sex. This is out of the UK. It's directed by Molly Manning Walker, and I found this to be one of the most original concepts of the year. I loved the natural feel of this. We tag along with these three young ladies as they go off on this party holiday, and it just follows these characters naturally. It's, it's almost as if we're along for the ride. The dialogue is very free-flowing. I loved the natural approach here, and it also has some very important themes, deep themes that it presents, but it does it in a way that is very delicate and allows the viewer to draw their own thoughts. And I thought this was very well done. And it does that by just showing and allowing us to just kind of step back and observe. Great job here by Walker, How to Have Sex. Number three, The Starling Girl. This was also a big surprise. Great little indie from first-time director Laurel Parmet. To see what they did with this budget and what they got out of this picture was, was super impressive. It doesn't break a lot of new ground per se, but it's a really strong drama with very interesting characters, especially just a great cast all the way around. The supporting actors were phenomenal in this film. Parmet uses the fundamentalist community to really give us a human story, and she doesn't judge, she doesn't point fingers, she doesn't ridicule the community, she just shows this transformation, this coming-of-age story. It's a story about a teenage girl, Jem. Her world is turned upside down when the youth pastor returns to the church from a long mission, and I'll leave it at that. Some really good tension and very emotional moments. I highly recommend this film, The Starling Girl. All right, let's get to the final two. Number two is Oppenheimer. This movie lived up to all the hype. I'm not going to really break it down for you. I did a short on this picture. Christopher Nolan, this to me is his magnus opus. This is the best film I've seen from him by far. It's definitely an important film, probably going to sweep up on the Oscars. I imagine it will win Best Director and Best Picture. Probably Robert Downey Jr. will win for Best supporting actor he does an awesome job and if you haven't seen this one it's definitely worth the three hours it goes quick it's got a great pace to it uh, lives up to everything in my opinion all right my favorite film of the year number one was the holdovers really loved this film i've seen it uh, twice already now it's the kind of film they don't really make anymore. It's just a, a heartfelt drama with great characters. It's funny, very witty dialogue. Paul Giamatti does a fantastic job. He plays a kind of a curmudgeon -y professor that is made to stay over the holidays to look after this group of kids that have nowhere to go. The character depth is great. There's also one of the... Uh, lead cafeteria lady stays behind as well. She's played by Divine Joy Randolph. She will probably win the Best Supporting Actress Award. Uh, I wouldn't doubt that. And Paul Giamatti has a great shot here at Best Actor. The film is made to look like a picture from the 1970s. The, the film stock, the cinematography style, everything about this film, just a really genuine picture that we don't get to see often these days. And you got to stand up and say hooray when they do make a picture like that. If you haven't seen this one, I highly recommend it. It was my favorite of the year. All right, that's a wrap, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to my top 10 favorite movies of 2023. Check the links in the description for all my movie content. I'll see you out on that highway. Peace.